Did you know he took that jacket from an actual Ken doll? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tommy Vitor. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And today we are going to be drafting the worst anti-woke grifters. Okay, so explain for us a little bit what you mean by grifters. So the the short answer is Ben Shapiro. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you think about people in industries and companies <laughs> that have made attacking wokeness, whatever that means to them, their industry. Yep. That is their entire business is drafting off these made up controversies to make money. All right. Well, we have a lot of examples here. Uh, so what do you say we dive in? I am very excited to dive in. I'm going to destroy you once again. I'm on uh, a tear. I'm the you Boston are, Celtics. I can't even I can't even push back against that because 80s. I just uh, I'm just I'm just the, the mid 2000s Miami Dolphins right now. <laughs> All right. So let's do the coin toss. You ready? Yep. Call in the air. Heads. Hills. All right. Sorry, pal. Have at it. All right. I am going to zig when you thought I was going to zag here. And with my first pick, go with Mike Huckabee's Kids Guide to Fighting Socialism. Wow. Parents and grandparents, are you aware that your children's teachers are brainwashing them with socialist ideals? Help your kids resist the left sinister agenda with Mike Huckabee's Free Kids Guide to Fighting Socialism. This important free gift will help kids learn why socialism is bad for America and how they can help fight back. It's part of a free gift bundle that includes a magazine and video lesson. To learn more, just visit KidsStopSocialism.com. That's KidsStopSocialism.com. Everything about this video is incredible. <laughs> the idea that your kids are capitalists, that uh, <laughs> our children are preparing to do battle against Vladimir Lenin and German Mao and Fidel Castro. In fact, uh, Ben, can you please go to second 24 of the film? I believe they're diagramming the Bay of Pigs invasion. <laughs> you have this sort of Indiana Jones style red line. From 1961. Doing the Bay of Pigs. So in order to receive the free patriotic gift bundle, you have to agree to the terms of the offer. And 30 days after they send you your free kid's guide, they're going to start sending you new crap, including uh, uh, some video once a month for 20 bucks, and then a magazine every other week for 575 So you're accidentally signing up for $30 yeah. a yeah. month worth of charges for this free kid's guide <laughs> to fighting socialists. Mike Huckabee's plan here is to revert to this like 25-year-old format of making money, which is to sell magazines on TV. <laughs> it's like the last time I saw... An actual magazine ad on television was for Nickelodeon magazine, and I think I was seven years old. Because my first choice is going to go with Ben Shapiro Burns Barbie. We have a clip on that one. What the f***? Run. There's no better microcosm for the right's obsession with grievance politics and culture wars than Ben Shapiro, who is a grown-ass man, although even, mm. even that is, Debatable. is up, up for debate, <laughs> uh, uh, getting mad that Barbie wasn't adequately, I don't know, conservative for him, good for him. Did you know he took that jacket from an actual Ken doll? <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, the sleeves are two inches long. <laughs> so first of all, the review is 43 minutes long. Has, and, and by the way, I I haven't I didn't watch a single minute of that. Good but for you. Tommy, I'm mad at myself for giving him one of his 1.8 million views. Yeah. In four days, he's just shitting on the movie. He says it's like the worst movie he's ever seen, and then it's gonna do well the first weekend and terribly after. Barbie did 162 million dollars the first weekend. Mattel stock, the Barbie doll stock, is up 30. percent So I think it's gonna do okay, Ben. What what I would give for a right wing boycott against my stuff, given oh, how well this movie is doing. I would kill for a right wing yeah. boycott. <laughs> just... Yeah, this is absolutely helping it do numbers. Yeah. For my next pick. Boycott Target. For Giotto Blow, who is a friend of both of ours, and we've uh, actually had an opportunity uh, to, to have uh, lunch with him and one day and get to meet him. He's got some great music. He even put out a video about Target and then targeting our kids. Uh, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Attention all shoppers, attention all shoppers. Yeah. Yeah. There's a cleanup yeah. on every aisle. Yeah. 
The first thing I want you to know, Brian, is Forgiato Blow's name is Kurt. <laughs> His name is Kurt Jantz. He got into uh, MAGA rapping and has blown up ever since. And yeah. For reasons that are obvious. That are obvious. He was at the Stop the Steal rally. He actually performed yeah. there. Okay, so Target releases an annual Pride Month collection. So as part of that collection this year, they started selling bathing suits designed to conceal the genitals of the person wearing them. That lying asshole, Matt Walsh, claimed they were selling them to kids. That is not true. It was never true. They were fact-checked a million times, but crazy people started coming right. into the stores, destroying things. The designer got death threats, and this chud <laughs> decided to go with his boy to the local Target, get some Pepsis or whatever, and ride in the cart and make get a video. A, get an iPhone 7 and just uh, and just make some art. This is what he does. He just cranks out like high-volume MAGA raps and yeah. makes cash off it's it. It's like the Rebecca Black of right-wing <laughs> uh, exactly conservative right. ecosphere. For me, it's Pac Biggie. For yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. So for my next one, I'm going my pillow going broke. Let's see the clip on this. My pillow is auctioning off more than 850 pieces of equipment from sewing machines to forklifts. The company is even subletting part of its manufacturing space. After January 6th, big box stores like Bed Bath and Beyond and Kohl's stopped selling my pillow products. And then last year, my pillow's biggest distributor, Walmart, Walmart dropped my pillow too. It turns out that having a CEO who is both the face of your brand and the face of conspiratorial election denialism is bad for business. Okay, so generally in business, you want as broad appeal as you can get. The decision to hitch your wagon to a criminal president leading an ever-shrinking faction of loyalists is already stupid unto itself. But you sell pillows. This isn't eggs. It's not something you can go out and buy like every week. It's a pillow. It's, and there are like a finite number of customers there. And if you just limit your customer base to like to like this small faction of like 20% of Trump loyalists and you sell a one-time purchase item, I don't know, maybe just do the math. It's like a commodity, right? Like you go to Target, you buy a pillow, you use it for way too long. Way too long. It gets truly disgusting. You eventually throw it out. Then you go back to Target and you buy another pillow. But if like I know... years have gone by in the, <laughs> well, midter, in the and, meantime. And if I know one brand is run by a, a right-wing lunatic, yeah. then I'll probably just avoid that right. one and buy any other pillow. Right. For my next pick, I'm going to go with the right stuff. What are you looking for in a partner? They just have to be a conservative. Definitely someone that wants to have kids. I like an independent man. Personally, I like the alpha male vibe. I want a man who really loves his family. Definitely someone whose faith is important to them. For me, it's someone who actually wants to meet my parents. And what's the biggest red flag when it comes to dating? A Democrat. No Democrats. A Democrat. Can't be a Democrat. A Democrat. That's easy. A Democrat. No Democrats. So no. <laughs> the, the Right Stuff is a dating app. It was founded by Kaylee McEnany's sister, and it was funded by Peter Thiel, the PayPal asshole, yeah. who is sort of ironic here because he is openly gay and the app doesn't allow same-sex matches. So apparently he's cool with funding a little light bigotry. The app was launched. It had some decent download numbers on day one and two, and then it's just cratered. And there's a great Daily Beast story about The Right Stuff where there's a woman in D.C. saying, it's all Mitch McConnell staffers, <laughs> so she never <laughs> used go. it. I don't know. Look, I, I miss the whole dating app thing. Yeah. Sorry, I'm old. I'm pretty sure you can talk about your political views on a lot of these apps. And I would love for someone to go in and see uh, if any of those women are actually <laughs> on this app, because I guarantee you they're not. All right, so for my next choice, I'm going to go Kid Rock versus Bud Light. Oh, this is a good one. This Sadly, let's see the clip on this one. Grandpa's feeling a little frisky today. Let me uh, say something to all of you and be as clear and concise as possible. Fuck Bud Light and fuck Anheuser-Busch. Have a terrific day. Okay, so first of all, Kid Rock is like a parody of Kid Rock. Mm. Like, he is exactly who you would make fun of Kid Rock for being. You gotta love how the Bud Light boycott uh, made all these people move over to other beer brands that were also owned by InBev. Like, InBev owns a ton of other beers, so these people were switching to Coors, which is owned by InBev, which is, again, going into the same pockets of the same people. But actually, the brand that did benefit most was Modelo, which isn't even an American company. I, I believe it's a, a Mexican beer brand. They are sending their money outside of the United States to drink their beer. Let's all remember, 
This is over the crime of allowing a trans influencer to endorse their product. Yeah, like, like sending Dylan Mulvaney like a beer with her face on it. Right. But I think the important thing to remember is the company itself it is of little importance. It's just intended for the pylon. Like it is a warning to other companies. Look what we can do if we all band together and to show you how much power they have when they do try to put forward some boycott. I totally agree with you. And the sad thing is this one really worked. Bud Light sales dropped 28% in June. The stock is down 12% since this happened. And again, it's like because they sent one, like they did one partnership with Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah. Ben, can you pull up the thing I just sent you real quick? Hey, Kid Rock, it's Joe Biden. Don't be such a ba wa da ba da bang da dang diggy diggy whiny little bitch ass and just drink your fucking beer. <laughs> I'm addicted to making AI Joe Biden videos, and that was one of them. <laughs> okay, well, I think I have to follow that up with ultra right beer. America's been drinking beer from a company that doesn't even know which restroom to use. That's why I created Conservative Dad's Ultra Right 100% Woke Free Beer. As conservatives, we're constantly getting hit in the face, left and right, by the woke mind virus. But the last place we want it is in our beer. If you know which bathroom to use, you know what beer you should be drinking. Stop giving money to woke corporations that hate our values. And to the rest of you woke corporations, stay the away from our kids. This is some random guy who jumped on the opportunity that arose after the Bud Light controversy to launch what he calls a woke-free American beer company. Yeah. It's pure grift. I wonder which ingredient was woke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, the barley, the hops. The barley. They say they're donating a portion of their funds to some pack that is electing anti-woke school board members. I'm sure most of the money is just going to this dude's pocket, Yeah, and uh, he's probably pretty happy about it. And also the video that he promoted this on has less than 4,000 views in three months. That's so not, dude, that's uh, not good. probably not a great launch. And if he couldn't catch fire then, it's very unlikely he's going to be able to succeed once people forget about the Bud Light controversy. Yeah, that's a tough one. Okay, so for my next one, I'm going to go with Truth Social. Let's watch this one. If you fuck around with us, if you do something bad to us, we are going to do things to you that have never been done before. Okay, so first of all, just true social unto itself, its very being was chosen as as an alternative to Twitter without knowing that Twitter would ultimately be bought by another right-wing right. provocateur. And so he's stuck with this thing, with this albatross around his neck. Yeah, I mean, like Rumble is MAGA YouTube. Truth was supposed to be MAGA Twitter. I guess Facebook is MAGA Facebook. But you're right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Elon just completely MAGA-fied yeah. Twitter. So and no we've already getting... seen what happens to these sites that follow along the same trajectory. I mean, Getter, I believe, was yeah. the same thing. Parler was the same thing. So, yeah, And terrible. I don't know if anybody uses them. Uh, I don't even know if they're still around, which I guess is a testament to the fact that these things don't work. But It's basically a personal platform for Trump to threaten our lives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Jack Smith's life, really. <laughs> yeah. With my final pick... Brian, I'm going to go with anti-woke investing. There's a lot of talk about wokeness and ESG and whether ESG is real and, and how ESG should be measured. And you have a very provocative view about all of it. Look, I think it's actually pretty simple. Over the last decade, what we've seen is large asset managers have mandated U.S. energy companies to produce less oil, to produce less natural gas. We're listing this new index fund, DRLL, on the New York Stock Exchange today, but what Strive is doing is delivering a new mandate, what I call the post-ESG mandate, to the U.S. energy sector to drill for more oil, to frack for more natural gas, to do whatever allows them to be most successful over the long run without regard to political, social, cultural, or environmental agendas. So as you heard there uh, from my guy Vivek, uh, these guys are very mad about something called ESG investing. It's one of the many acronyms you hear Ron DeSantis vomit out on a daily basis. DEI, ESG, I'm whining about this and that. It stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance Practices, basically for, you know, if you have some money in the stock market, it's in your 401k, you're saving for retirement, you think to yourself, I don't want to invest this in Exxon and contribute to the planet burning down before I make it to retirement. So I'm going to put in an ESG fund. Again, it makes Republicans big mad. And so people like Vivek Ramaswamy, who calls ESG investing a cancer, has created these investment products that you can buy that I guess like lets you give the middle finger to woke libs like me who care about the world. He also says that this investing would happen without regard to political, social, and cultural agendas. 
all of those things are involved in business. Like that that's all a major element of this. And so you can't invest completely ignorant of these things because these things are so taken into account by the companies themselves, by consumers, by that that's how the market works. Yeah, and, and oil companies have been getting massive subsidies and tax breaks, et cetera, for years. So right. give me a break. Okay. So for my last pick here, I'm gonna go with the sound of freedom. We have to do a lot more. And we gotta start with Donald Trump. What do you mean? Well, he's got to be in there because he's going to go after the traffickers. Do you think he would? Do you think he understands that? Uh, well, I, I, we, we, were, we were with him last night. Oh, I didn't Bed know that. Minister, yes. Yeah. Oh, we so showed, he's going to be moved to do this, do something. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. He wasn't he's here gonna, last night. This is the new Moses. I mean, I'm still Jesus, but he's the new Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Pharaoh, let my children go free. Damn. Uh, look. I think everybody's all for the fact that human trafficking is a bad thing, a serious problem. Everybody understands that. But to have this guy, Jim Caviezel, be your mouthpiece, be like so entrenched in the crazy QAnon of it all, claiming that liberals are harvesting adrenochrome for from kids. I mean, like to make that person your mouthpiece effectively just delegitimizes the project. It makes it part of this whole QAnon crazy universe. And uh, yeah, it's really weird to think that a, what seems like a legitimate movie right. grossed $127 million, by the way. It's a, a movie about human trafficking allegedly based on a true story, but it seems like a big part of the marketing is kind of folding this film into yeah. the QAnon narrative. I mean, the, the adrenochrome conspiracy theory says that Hollywood elites kidnap kids and extract chemicals from them by torturing them and, like, drink it to stay alive for longer. Like, it is batshit insane. Yeah. And he believes this stuff. And he talks about it publicly. He's on Steve Bannon's podcast talking about it. All right. So that was both of our lists. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you say we take a, a few seconds here each and explain why each one of us thinks we should be crowned the winner? Yeah. I mean, they probably don't. They probably know I won. But yeah, I'm happy to do they it. can see that my list is better. So, but, but I'll give you some time anyway. Here's why I have the best list of anti-woke grifters. First of all, we got Mike Huckabee trying to convince kids to fight socialism. And in the process, he's trying to scam them and their families, I guess, out of $30 a month for videos and shit they don't want. Truly hilarious and terrible. Uh, only in the anti-woke industry could Kurt Jant, AKA 4G Auto Blow, <laughs> become a successful rapper. But here we are, Brian. If you hated the Bud Light controversy, you will despise Ultra Right Beer, which is just a made up beer company to you know, jump on this uh, made up controversy. The Right Stuff is a dating app for conservatives who are too stupid to figure out how to sort by political leanings <laughs> in all the other apps. And it's funded by Peter Thiel, even though he would not be able to use the app because it doesn't allow same-sex matches. And then the cherry on top of this list is the anti-woke investment offerings from people who are happy to charge you more money to make less. All right, that was a valiant effort by Thank Tommy, you. but here's why my list is the best list when it comes to anti-woke grievance. So we'll start off with Ben Shapiro, grown-ass Ben Shapiro, again, debatable, debatable uh, whining about <laughs> Barbie. It's not just the most topical choice here, but it is also peak culture war to the point where he is complaining that Barbie, a movie about a little girl's doll, isn't to his liking, isn't adequately uh, conservative enough. Then we go to My Pillow Going Broke because it's bad enough that Mike Lindell opted to predicate his brand on Donald Trump, who has an ever shrinking base. But his product is a one time use product. Once you've got a pillow, you've got a pillow. So it doesn't seem like the kind of thing where you'd want to be shrinking your user base on a daily basis. Then we've got Kid Rock versus Bud Light. And so the same crowd uh, who's crowing about how much they love America has now effectively made a Mexican beer company, the top beer company in the United States. Thanks to you guys. Go USA. Truth Social. Uh, Trump decided to go the way of Getter and Parler, all because he saw an opening with woke Twitter, only for Twitter to then be bought by another right winger, thereby immediately rendering his Truth Social uh, endeavor worthless. And finally, The Sound of Freedom, because there is nothing quite like the marketing campaign for your movie being a guy who calls Donald Trump Moses and believes that Democrats are harvesting kids for their adrenochrome. And that's why my list is the best list when it comes to anti-woke grievance. All right, Brian. Everybody remembers that I won our last draft. That was the draft of who was most likely to drop out of the 2024 Republican primary first. Viewers may also recall that Brian has previously expressed a hatred for a certain condiment. I've never eaten ketchup in my life, and if it touched any of my food, I wouldn't eat it. What? Yeah, I'll stay far Even away. Even french fries? Yeah, never. Now, that gets us to our punishment. <laughs> now, we are keeping our word where we said we'd never make Brian have ketchup. We didn't say anything about ketchup-flavored Doritos. We think you might like these. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
Cheers. <laughs> uh, I hate this. <laughs> this is so real. Uh, oh, the smell of it. I got it. I got. I'm done with this. I'm begging you. Let me take this out on Tommy. Forget the content. Just let me take this out on Tommy. Remember when you vote. So with that said, make sure you vote for who you think won this episode in the community tab. There you can find the vote and, uh, and make sure you do the right thing because this sucks and I will have my vengeance. Yeah, like let us know that I won and uh, subscribe. <laughs>